مرحبا شلوم and welcome to another episode by the Ropescast, the only alternative view of the Middle East. And today we're discussing uh, the Arab society in Israel, Xenia, uh, after a very difficult weekend. Well, uh, Ibrahim, uh, we were supposed uh, to discuss with our guests today uh, the questions of integration of the Arab society uh, in Israel and also the possibility of the Arabs in Israel serving as a, well, I don't like the, to use the word bridge because I know that it annoys many people. Uh, people are telling me we are not a bridge, uh, we are human beings. Uh, but yes, as a liaison perhaps uh, to the Arab Middle East, we are in the midst of this uh, fascinating process of Abraham Accords. And although I do see the growing uh, you know, number of uh, Israeli Arab citizens, by the way, Ibrahim, do you prefer to use the term Arab citizens of Israel or Palestinian Arabs uh, in Israel? Uh, what do you think? I think for the sake of this particular conversation, yes, we should be talking about the Arab society because yes. uh, it includes uh, other elements of the community that doesn't see itself mm-hmm. as Palestinian, mm-hmm. like some with uh, the Druze community, uh, the majority, Absolutely. some of the Christians. So we'll talk about the Arab yeah. society. For this so discussion. I do see that, uh, you know, uh, more entrepreneurs are going to the Gulf and Morocco. And certainly there are many who use the opportunity to travel to the beautiful Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Rabat, Manama, and the other cities. Uh, but at the same time, we see that they're also missing. It's the missing part. It's the missing link in uh, this uh, equation. Uh, I would personally, you know, would want to see someday, you know, an Arab ambassador uh, who is coming from uh, the ambassador of Israel, who is coming from the Arab society to represent us in an Arab country. Wouldn't it be natural? First of all, I completely agree with uh, not using the word bridge. I like to use this as the word key. We're the key to the Middle East, and I think we're also the key to the conflict and the fact that we're uh, the majority of our community is also Palestinian and Israeli citizens. We can be the ones who can understand both sides and bring both sides to the table, and hopefully that will be our role in the future. But unfortunately, today we're stuck in a survival mode, and particularly with the murders that we saw over the last week and weekend that will uh, you know, make a little bit of a shift of the focus of our conversation today. But uh, if we look at uh, our integration, this is exactly the problem, like you say. I, for one, looked at the embassies in uh, UAE wanting to maybe apply right when the embassy uh, uh, was established. The Israeli embassy. The Israeli the embassy. Because yeah. I wanted the Arab voice to be there. I thought I can bring uh, to be a value. Ibrahim, uh, just for the sake of our listeners, uh, you're originally coming from Nazareth, Correct. right? Yes. But you live today in uh, the Jewish city, yes, in yes. Herzliya. Yes. Uh, today I'm in a, a, a mixed city. I mean, it's yes. uh, hard to stay in the north and it's hard to stay away from the center where all the business Well, is. you know, this is something that, uh, you know, many young Israelis uh, do. They travel and they move from south and from the north to the center for, you know, job opportunities. But uh, again, you know, uh, today, uh, you know, you are setting an example also, you know, because you are living in the city that is not very much... can keep categorized as a mixed city. Mix. No, yes, no, I'm one of the only mixed. Arabs, I yes. think. A lot of people are always surprised that I even live there and they, yes. you know, talk to you with a tone of surprise. And I think these are the things that should be erased and before mm-hmm. we move forward. You know, mm-hmm. when I get the question of Ibrahim mm-hmm. in this city, really? Yes. As in that way of surprise. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if we don't pass this, if we don't have an Arab naturally in an embassy in UAE, yeah. if we don't have... Uh, Our yeah. community active in Israeli politics and in the decision making, how can we make a difference in the lives today and in our future as a whole? Well, uh, we would love to dwell on these very important issues, but unfortunately, the count of bodies in the Arab sector in Israel and the Arab society in Israel is growing by the minute. Not a day goes by without another victim. And we see the war of the criminal families, but we also see conflicts uh, with the you know, private uh, citizens who do not belong to this uh, crime clans. And we mostly see the Israeli government and uh, its head, Benjamin Netanyahu, helpless uh, in, uh, you know, in facing uh, this uh, horrific crisis. We see the numbers growing from the last year, Uh, and uh, we already passed, unfortunately, the horrific 100 victims from the beginning of the year. We are still only in June right now. I remember only in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, we only passed the 100 uh, threshold. And we talked the years by before the that the we're going to be uh, by the end of the year. And yeah. we were talking, oh, we're at the mm-hmm. 90s. We might reach 100. And then 100 became normal. And now 100 is half a year. And this is staggering numbers. That, uh, this is just... so very painful uh, and horrible. 
And uh, this is a long-term problem, we have to admit it. It's not something that was, uh, you know, uh, born uh, yesterday, but at the same time, we see clear deterioration. So, Ibrahim, today we have a special guest who will help us to understand what is going in the Arab society in Israel, what uh, is expected from the government and what is not happening right now, and also what is the key to uh, for the solution to getting out of this uh, crisis and to improving the uh, sense uh, of uh, security of uh, any person, uh, especially person in the Arab sector, uh, that she and he can live their lives and not be afraid from the occasional shooting, uh, intimidation, uh, protection, demands, uh, rocket, and so on. I think it's, uh, you know, it's going to answer a lot of questions to us and to our audience. So without further ado, uh, Ksenia, I'll give you the floor to introduce our guest speaker for today. So our very special guest for today is Dr. Thabet Aburas as a co-CEO of Abraham Initiatives. Aburas has authored many publications and media articles on Israel's Arab-Jewish relations. Prior to this role, he served as Adala's board of directors from 2006 to 2008, and in 2010 became the director of its Negev office. He is a member of the board of directors of several environmental and Jewish Arab educational organizations, and has also been a co-chair of the board of the Hand in Hand Schools in Israel. Thabit obtained a PhD in the field of geography and regional development from the University of Arizona. He is a political geographer and has taught many courses at Ben Gurion University and Sapir College on ethnic relations, land planning, and regional development. And uh, Ibrahim, uh, you know, I uh, know Thabit for many years. I can tell you that there is no other person in Israel who is no more knowledgeable on the issues of uh, inter-Arab uh, Jewish relations uh, in Israel and uh, the challenges uh, of the Arab society. Uh, welcome and ahalan usahlan, doctor. Hello, thank you for the opportunity. Sharafna, thank you so much. Uh, it's our pleasure to host you here on our podcast. And I think uh, uh, after the weekend that we've had uh, in the Arab society, the bloody weekend that we had, um, you know, initially we were uh, considering to discuss the Arab society in general, our uh, regional role. But uh, looking at the previous weekend, uh, we have to start with understanding what's going on with the Arab society currently today in Israel. Uh, 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 what's What happened last weekend, uh, the crime rate that we have, and uh, we would love to hear your input on uh, why we are in the situation we are today, uh, what are the causes and what are the reasons why the Arab society is at uh, the position that it's in today? Yeah, uh, thank you. I, well, I, I can say the escalation uh, last week, I guess, uh, they didn't come uh, as, as a surprise. We believe that the last government is doing nothing to try to combat crime and violence within the Arab community. But let's go even uh, a little bit uh, to the past and uh, tell you there are uh, many deep causes for the crime and violence in the Arab community. This include the first of all the uh, deep actually the gaps between Arab and Jewish citizens. Discrimination is a major policy between Arabs and Jews here in Israel, and we are suffering. In, in discrimination in all levels, in all realms of society, and providing services, including uh, uh, policing, fair and equal policing. We don't have, we don't, we, we feel sometimes that Arab towns are uh, actually uh, exterritorial within the state of Israel in terms of uh, all of the issue of patrolling police or uh, law and order and so forth. But if I'm talking about uh, uh, deep causes, I will mention here that the shortage of land and the planning and the crisis uh, in housing, it's one of the major causes of the uh, uh, rivalries, I would say the conflicts among people. People in my, in my community uh, uh, are comp competing over very limited resources, especially of land. This is one thing. And the other, uh, uh, another cause, I will say the fact that almost 40% of our kids, uh, young people in the age, between the age of 18 to 24, are neither working nor uh, uh, actually uh, attending uh, higher education. 
uh, institutions. So uh, those people, uh, tens of thousands, around 40,000 of kids in this age, they are sitting at home or in the coffee shops, Nargila but, uh, shops. If you allow me, uh, Tabet, uh, uh, we know that uh, the situation with the uh, violence and crime in their community, uh, it, it, there is a deterioration. Uh, there is no way to go around it. You know, we look at from 2000 uh, until this day, you know, we have more uh, violent crime. Uh, we have more uh, families, uh, criminal families uh, that have their own armies, actually, the militias. Uh, but what specifically happened since November 1st? Because we see uh, a you know, spike uh, in violence, which is unprecedented. Nothing like ever before. I mean, you know, the thing with resources and housing, these are painful long-term problems. But yes. what specifically happens starting from uh, November 1st, 2022, since after the Israeli elections? What happened is actually we have a new minister of uh, public security, internal security, that the first step that he did changing the name of the his ministry to actually uh, national security minister of national security uh, this man ben gvir is a racist is actually a, a terrorist and uh, uh, spreading a hatred a speech and he is not uh, ignoring the fact that he's a racist person and this man actually in charge of uh, providing or uh, providing a uh, security and safety for our uh, people, for the all Israeli people. And we say we see the escalation exactly in the last few months. I'll just just to make a comparison. By today, since the uh, since the incip uh, inception of this government, actually the formation of this government, six months ago, we have already 102 and two people were killed, casualties of crime and violence. If I compare it with the number, the figure with last a year for the same time we have 35 people it's almost tripled okay this man is a really a care about other things we we are the Arab a, a resident a citizen not in his uh, top priority his top priority is to destroy houses in his Jerusalem in the, in the West Bank this man is sending a lot of police forces to the territories to protect a uh, 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 settler and to destroy houses in Jerusalem. So we, we if I compare uh, compare what he's doing with that, what the last minister of uh, public uh, uh, safety, I would say, public security, Omar Barleib and his deputy, we saw a, a real change after seven years of uh, increasing in the number of casualties uh, of uh, victims of crime and violence in the Arab uh, community. We saw a drop last year. 2021, we have 126 people were killed, 222 under the, uh, the last government, we had 116. It went down, but now it went up again. So, so we, we we don't trust this minister, and we are calling the resignation of this uh, minister. But let's face it, this is not only him. This is the police. He's not doing anything right now. After last year, we saw the police is patrolling in our uh, community. Not not anymore. It's uh, it's uh, actually the responsibility of the whole government that's not doing anything. Again. Do you see? Do you see that uh, basically these uh, criminal uh, uh, these crime organizations are seeing and looking at the the political map of the country and looking at this new government and looking at this new minister and basically saying to themselves. This is a better time to what to, to strike to increase our activities since there is a minister here that doesn't uh, will not focus on our uh, affairs. Is that something that these uh, criminal organizations are looking at? And yes. my and the second uh, half of my question is, how much do you uh, put as part of the problem the economic situation that we are in, uh, especially since the beginning of the protests here in Israel? and uh, the high inflation and basically a lot of people that we see in the Arab community in general in the past few years have been going to the black market. Uh, do you see a rise in that number? Is that a direct effect on uh, the, high, uh, the increase in crime? Yeah, I agree with you. I believe that the economic component of the crisis is really obvious. 
I would like to give uh, to illustrate that. I would like to give a good example. Take the Negev area. There are th over 300,000 Bedouins live in the Negev area. Can you imagine the whole Arab towns in the Negev except Rahat, the city of Rahat, no financial services, no bank branches. So people are going to uh, actually looking for change, change, changes, change, changes, changes, and to uh, borrow money, going to the black market. But more than that, there is a vacuum. If the uh, if the uh, the police is not here, okay, the government with slowed down its activities within the Arab community. We uh, uh, we witness a vacuum, and somebody is filling the vacuum. Who's filling the vacuum? Actually, the organized crime families, and uh, actually, who is uh, there is a, a problem of Hawa protection, and then uh, those people are getting receiving this Hawa, and then they are firing in people, and they are the banks actually. They are uh, uh, giving loans to people, okay, and. Since the police is not there, so the people when they have problems. They refer to organize, or, or criminal organization to solve their problem, uh, problems. So they are the judges, they are the banks, they are the uh, problem solv solvers. So it's a, a problem. We left without the state itself, without the, the state institution. So economy is very important. Uh, I believe that it's the, the severe economic uh, conditions within the Arab. Now in Israel, I think there is a, sl a slowdown in the economy. And we see that even more within the Arab community than Arab town. So, so all in all, I now, say that one of the deep causes of the problem is the financial services, uh, lack of bank, bank services uh, uh, and finance services within the Arab community. Um, Dr. Sabet, uh, I would like to ask you, you know, because... Uh, you touched something very important, uh, the economic uh, achievements, integration in the Israeli society. And, you know, um, you know, me, for me, uh, I'm living in a non-mixed city. I live in Modin. And I uh, see in the, you know, last 10 years, uh, this uh, tendency that uh, is making me very happy because I see more integration. Yes, I see more Arab doctors. I see more Arab pharmacists, uh, more Arab uh uh, you know, uh, vendors uh, in the stores uh, like never before. So uh, in one hand, it means that you have more involvement in the economic life, perhaps more economic opportunities. Uh, I have a, a Arab clerk now in my bank uh, who is extremely nice. And I know that she came from the north uh, in order to enjoy from the, you know, job opportunities that exist in the center. So on one hand, we have this, uh, you know, trend uh, for increased integration. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you see underdevelopment uh, and uh, uh, the lack of opportunities in their towns and problems with everything that has to do with construction and so on. How do you explain, you know, so how does these two trends live together? Tanya, you are touching very important uh, issue. This is part of the uh, development. I agree with you that the uh, Arabs are making a lot better than uh, 10 years ago. I can just give you a figure. The integration in the health system is just a great. 24% of the total doctors in Israel are Arabs. We are making up only 20%, but 24% of the Arab are, uh, the doctors in Israel are Arabs. 40% of the nurses are Arabs. 50%, half of the pharmacists are Arabs. We see middle class, Arab middle class is expanding. And they are now even immigrating, moving to Jewish cities. You know, Arabs living not only now in, in bigger num numbers, not only in the mixed cities, but in the Jewish cities. Yes, this is part of the uh, uh, situation. But uh, compare it with what's going on in Lod, for example, and you see the uneven development, the poverty, the gaps between Arabs and Jews. Arabs are making up one third of the population of Lod. Okay, and still they are not integrated. They actually, they, the mayor and the municipality is not doing anything to uh, to actually to try to bring them to integration. And here is the problem: the uneven development, the poverty among Arab neighborhoods. This is why major reason why Lod is the top uh, list of the uh, cities with the crime casualties uh, victims. 
So and at the top of this, the whole policy in Israel, the uh, hatred, the racism. Just last week, the Minister of Justice, uh, uh, Levine, uh, just stated that, well, Arabs are moving to Jewish cities and Jews are fleeing those uh, cities. Can you imagine a Minister of Justice in uh, UK or United States saying, well, Jews are moving to New York or to London and the Christians are leaving or fleeing. It's a race. This is a, definitely it's anti-Semites anti for sure. So can we say the same uh, to label the Minister of Injustice? Uh, yes, it's a Minister of Injustice, not Minister of Justice, really, uh, uh, in, as anti-Semite anti -Semite person. So really, the whole the whole uh, picture in the country is really dark in terms of rights, in, ter in terms of equality. Israel is still without a law of equality, basic law of equality. This is why now Ben Gvir and the Zionist Religious Party promoting, uh, trying to promote actually the implementation of the nation state law to fill it with uh, now to, to work. Article 7 of the nation state law is stating developing the country, state of Israel for its Jewish people, not for the Israeli people, for ja, the Jewish citizens. It's racism. It's obvious racism. Yes, I don't want to uh, ignore the fact that Arabs are making better than uh, 10 years ago, but there, uh, there is economic reason for that. You know what? 50%, 50, 50 half of the kids who are attending the first grade in Israeli schools are either uh, Arab kids or uh, ultra orthodox Haredi kids. Now, if I am telling you that Arabs are making up 20% of the population, yet they are contributing only 10% of the Israeli GDP. If the Haredi Jews who are making up 15% of the uh, total population and they're contributing less than 6% 6 of the Israeli GDP, if those people not work enough 20 years down the road, I believe it's going to hit the Israeli economy. This is why Netanyahu actually is uh, trying to integrate Arabs and uh, Haredi Jews in the economy, which is fine. It's a win-win situation. It's good for the state of Israel. It's good for uh, the Arab citizens. And we are happy with that. But still, we see a parallel to that. More racism within the state of Israel. More racism in the state of Israel. We look to the high schools. I am the co-executive director of the Abraham Initiatives. And we have a project to work with uh, uh, young people in the high schools and pre academy armies. And we see how the switch in, in the right wing, extreme right wing, uh, wing uh, uh, ideology, attitudes towards the Arab, a lot of racism. So, economy cannot flourish in Israel with racism. Economy cannot flourish with uneven development. Economy cannot really flourish with discrimination between Arabs and Jews. So, Dr. Thabit, uh, now that you've uh, really highlighted uh, the problem, I guess my question is, uh, what is the solution? Well, how can we improve the situation? How can we uh, reduce violence and ensure better integration of the Arab community? And uh... and stop the violence right now, you know, because people are dying. Uh, this is incredible, unbelievable. It's a wave of terror. Uh, if something like this would happen in the Jewish sector right now with the uh, uh, you know, uh, terrorist attacks, then of course it would be the talk of the news 24-7. Actually, we need a joint work with the three players. First of all, the government itself. The second player, the police. And the third player, actually, actor, I would say the Arab community itself. Without building a trust between the government and the Arab community, without building trust between the Arab community and the police, it's not going to work. This is one thing. Listen, the, 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 the plans are there. We have to implement the plans. Now, the fact that after last week, the prime minister met, did meet with the uh, uh, mayors, Arab mayors, with Arab MKs, and they are starting, we recommended to the prime minister office to actually uh, to form an interministerial uh, uh, committee, and he should lead that committee. Because we need the first person in the country to lead all the efforts of combating crime and violence. We are in a small country in terms of geography. The shoots in Jaljulia, they are hearing that in Kfar Saba. Yes, it's the shooting and killing start with us. 
but it's not going to stop with us. It's not going to end with us. Okay. So the government is very important factor in in trying to deal with the deep causes of the crime and violence. Try to solve the problem of the young generation, of education, of employment within the Arab community, and financial services and so forth. But besides that, we need the police. The police is not doing enough in, in our actually is not doing nothing almost not patrolling enough i think the israeli police is very weak uh, uh, now nowadays uh, and don't have the tools to combat crime and violence right now because a lot of efforts the police are going to occupy territories to east jerusalem and to now to protect the demonstrations all over the country so we need more police forces with better technology and to and we need a minister that really believe that we should combat crime and violence, with, not with this style. Uh, I think the prime minister should fire the ben -Gvir, minister Ben Gvir. He's not uh, he, uh, the right person to do this work. We all the time compare it with the former minister uh, uh, Omar Barleb and his deputy who who start a good efforts. We saw positive and first steps last last uh, year. This is the second uh, uh, factor. Also, I think the police should uh, work harder to uh, prevent the leaking of uh, of uh, uh, actually arms and weapons, illegal weapons. Uh, the, uh, the Israeli uh, uh, military should uh, try to uh, protect the uh, military bases. I think there is a lot of smuggling of illegal weapons to the Arab community. And then I'm coming to my community. I believe that my community, the Arab community, can do a better job. I believe there is a withdrawal. There is a vacuum right now. Withdrawal of political parties. We don't feel the activities among young people or to make peace between families and uh, uh, and to be more active in social. There is withdrawal from activity of the imams, the religious leaders. Also, there is a withdrawal of educators. So there is a vacuum that's filled right now by uh, uh, criminal organizations that really dictating almost everything. And I would like to just remind all of us, we are approaching five months from now, uh, the uh, local election, uh, uh, municipality elections. And I'm telling you, the, the, those families, organized crime family, families are competing over controlling some of those local governments and municipalities. And this is kind of devastating for the Arab community. Uh, if those people are right now, we witness some in some Arab towns, those organized crimes dictating who is gonna be the principals of school. So there is, we are actually approaching uh, a moment of uh, collapse within the Arab community. You know, I uh, just two things come to mind. First of all, uh, it's the successful combat of the Israeli police uh, with the wave of crime in Netanya. We all remember the jolly uh, 90s and 2000s when Netanya was the hub uh, of criminal activities, and then somehow it was resolved. Uh, it comes to mind that, yes, uh, if uh, uh, in the past, uh, with perhaps uh, lesser forces, the Israeli police was able to achieve success there, uh, if it will be really determined, it will be able, and of course will work with the community uh, in an open and true way, it will be able to achieve success also in the Arab uh, uh, society in Israel. Uh, another thing that comes to mind is the 2000, the year of 2000. I don't know if you agree with this assumption, but I heard it from many people before. They believe that uh, this year was crucial uh, in the decline uh, of uh, police activities uh, in the Arab uh, villages and cities in Israel uh, after the uh, tragic events. Uh, of October 2000, uh, there was kind of a decision of the police. Uh, okay, we, you know, uh, we understand now. Uh, we don't need to be too involved. Uh, let them do whatever they want. And, you know, we are withdrawing uh, to the uh, perimeters of the cities, but not the cities uh, themselves. And therefore, you have this mess that uh, is uh, uh, growing and brewing for now more than 23 years. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, Sammy, I agree with you, actually, the figures, the numbers are saying everything. Can you imagine that since uh, 1980 to 2000, 83 people 
were victims uh, of crime and violence. 83 people within 20 years. 2000, and from 2000 until today, over 1,850 casualties. Well, this is saying a lot. Yes, you are right. The, the uh, tipping point actually was the uh, second intifada, the tra you call it tragic event of uh, 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 2000, October 2000. And yes, the police really left the Arab community and doesn't care. It's not patrolling anymore. They are coming to Arab towns when they are, would like to destroy houses, for example. They are coming with special campaigns uh, and uh, that's it. And But honestly, we saw improvement last year. Again, I don't want to hide that, that with the same police, listen, with the same police forces under different uh, leadership, okay? Again, you have Sagalovich and uh, Omar Barley. We saw a start the same police without what uh, uh, Ben Gvir is trying to do now. He is uh, uh, actually uh, he's asking for demanding uh, national guards. Why we need national guards for that? They are demanding the interference of the Israeli Shabak, the Israeli intelligence. They are demand. Well, look to the other last year, and we saw a lot of uh, uh, starting point that we saw less killing, less shooting. Under so under different leadership. So what we need really now a true and uh, I will say uh, 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 a real decision to take a decision, the right decision to act, and uh, uh, and to honest. I will say honest decision to combat crime and violence within the Arab community. And unfortunately, we don't see that. We don't see that from this government. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, as you say, uh, we're not seeing uh, any end in sight or any uh, improvement anytime soon, unfortunately. But um, I want to take us and zoom out a little bit. Uh, you know, we here as Ropes, we are a regional organization and we work on uh, strengthening uh, trilateral ties between uh, Israeli uh, young professionals, uh, Palestinians and uh, people from the MENA region uh, from across the area from across the region and uh, uh, when we look at uh, our initiatives and we look at the Arab society uh, now that we have you here we would love to hear a little bit from you a little bit on the regional element uh, first of all how did the Arab society perceive the Abraham Accords uh, what are what is the role that the Arab society has today in the regional uh, uh, integration and what can it do in the future? Well, actually, uh, Arab citizens really uh, would like to see peace between their country and their people, the Arabs. They would love to see that. They benefit the most from peace between Arab countries and uh, their state, Israel. However, having said that, uh, there is a problem. The problem that the conflict, continue conflict between their own people, the Palestinians, and their own state, Israel. Everything should pass through the solving the conflict, establishing uh, a normal relation between Palestinians and uh, uh, actually Israelis, having a, a Palestinian independent and sovereign state. Yet, yet I have to say that we witnessed in the last two, three years, dozens uh, I would say tens of thousands of Arabs really did uh, visit United Arab Emirates and other uh, areas to look for uh, their culture, first of all, but also to look for uh, economic opportunities there. And I know about people already making some businesses over there. However, we have a problem here. I'm very critical of what's going on in the MENA uh, uh, region. Uh, it's embarrassing me sometimes. I'd love to talk about myself. I look to the region in different glasses, not only through Israeli glasses. I am a, an Arab, I am a Muslim. It's embarrassing me that I have more rights in this racist country, Israel, more than the Arab people who are living in the, uh, in, the in the Arab countries. Now- I think particularly uh, when we look at Palestinians uh, who are uh, refugees in certain countries as well. Yes, yes, but uh, more than that, I believe that the fact that we are, listen, I understand the Israelis, Jewish Israelis, the are so uh, celebrating the relations with the United Arab uh, uh, Emirates, and they are looking forward to see it with Saudi Arabia. But we are talking about dictatorship regimes. I would like to see people have 
uh, freedom of speech in those countries, okay? To have more opportunities, to have a civic society, okay? And now Israel is not, should not always do, uh, I understand the uh, position, the geostrategical geo position of Israel trying to uh, defend itself by building a pact with the Arab countries against Iran. However, I'm looking to the people, the Arab people also, not to the dictatorship regime. And yet, I believe that politics is all about politics. Humans are more important. And I dream for a day that I can visit Arab countries to see a peace between my people, Palestinians, and my country, Israel, and peace between Arab countries and Israel too. Uh, this is uh, our common dream that we share, and uh, we think that it can, of, co of course, benefit with everyone uh, here in this region to achieve the rights, equality, and uh, achieve uh, the coexistence, uh, yes, that we are uh, all uh, seeking uh, in this world. Uh, Dr. Thabit, I would like to sincerely thank you. It was a fascinating talk. Thank you for participation in the Ropes cast. And uh, we do hope to host you in the future with uh, more positive things to discuss. Now we have to focus on what is hurting, but I hope the time will come and uh, we will be able also to, you know, discuss with you the aspects of uh, the Arab language, uh, the integration uh, of the Arab society in Israel uh, and positive results in this regard. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I just want to remind that there are more interesting and fascinating episodes at, uh, of Ropecast. And you can find everything and, of course, subscribe at your favorite podcast platform, wherever you are listening to it. And if you want to seek more information about our organizations, we advise you to go to the website ropes.org. And if you want to become a guest at our podcast one day, uh, there is an email. Please write it down, info at ropes.org. Thank you, Shukran, and Raba for all of you for uh, listening to us today. And we hope to have you on our next episode here at the Ropescast. Stay tuned.